Today we're going to talk about waterproofing Anderson power pole connectors. These are Anderson power pole connectors. First Robotics teams use these kind of connectors because they're very easy to use and they're very secure. You can use these particular contacts which are rated for 45 amps and crimp them onto 10 gauge wire using this style of crimper and when you do that you press those crimps into these housings and you end up with a connector that looks like this and these connectors go together really easily and with these little clips you can install them like this and now you've got a real secure connector I have used these connectors throughout my electric kayak uh, for instance right here we see this is the battery that drives my system and I've got an Anderson connector that hooks up to it this video isn't about how to make the Anderson connectors because there are lots of videos out there where teams have explained how to make these rather this video is how to take an Anderson power pole connector and make it waterproof once I had a whole bunch of these connectors in my kayak I started working on ways to run cables and these connectors between the different components that I have in my kayak that would keep them splash proof or even immersion proof if water was to get inside and the way that I started that off was by looking at some of these IP68 gland nuts that you use to run wires into the inside of boxes and they're called a gland nut because inside of this nut assembly there is a rubber gland well, here's one here a rubber gland that fits inside of here and when you put a wire of the right size in there and screw this nut down on it it compresses this gland on the outside of the jacket and gives you a watertight seal so I took the took measurements off of one of these glands and modeled up a new gland that has an opening in it so that will fit on the outside of a 10 gauge double strand wire and it fits really tightly onto it so you can install it on your wire like this and then you can install that and in the back of the gland nut you tighten that down that gives you a waterproof connection once I had that geometry designed I started looking at ways that I could then extend that to waterproof the connectors themselves so what I came up with was a design for a boot that you can print 3d print out of flexible urethane which is called uh, TPU and this boot will slide onto a wire and then the Anderson power pole connectors will fit inside and when you have two of those in the boots they will mate up and then I 3d printed some housing parts with a quick disconnect on them so that when you put these together you can lock them in place and that gives you a waterproof seal if you plug the one end with your finger and you blow on the other end it's completely airtight so we know that it would be watertight too to make the seal watertight where the wire comes through the boot what you do is you and first you install the connector and the wire in the boot and then you take a sharpie and then you make a mark on the back side of that wire where it comes out of the boot so you can tell where it's coming through and then you extend the connector back out again until you can see your mark and then you take a little bit of RTV silicone and you dab it on the wire right around that mark and then you pull it back inside the housing into place and 
that RTV will watertight that seal that's right there. And that's what I've done on this one for testing purposes to prove that it was watertight. And the way that I did that was I took this uh, boot with the, the wire sealed into the end of it and filled this up with water and showed that the water will not come out of this seal. Um, the other thing that you can do is you can install this one in a housing like this and then put this one on here like that and then you can blow on the end of here and that ends up being airtight. Let's talk about the individual components that make up one of these inline connectors. First you've got a boot which is the same part on both sides. It's got a face seal on the front of it and on the back side it's got a little ridge so that when you install housing that housing is held in place and on this side it has a little friction washer that goes between the lip of the boot and the inside of the housing and that's there because when I first made these the interface between this housing was pressing on the rubber lip of the boot and it made it so that when you put these together and got them under compression it was it was too much friction in there and they would get stuck to reduce that friction I designed in a little friction washer that's 3d printed and those friction washers can be made in varying thicknesses so that you can get the just the right amount of compression on your connector joint when you put it together. You want to select the thickness of that washer so that when you put this together, when these first just barely start to touch, you're about a third of the way up the slope. And this slope, the full slope, is 15 thousandths tall. Uh, and if you were to put these together and have the finger engage on that slope right at the end and twist it, that means you'd be squeezing the, the gasket faces 15 thousandths of an inch. I found that if you do that, that seems to be too much compression. It makes it hard to put together and take apart the connectors. To make it easier to test and figure out which of your friction washers gives you that right compression, I made a boot that you can use for testing that does not have the bump on the outside of it that holds the housing in place. So that lets you very easily take a washer and just drop it in place, put it on the housing like that, and then you can put them together. Now this one, this one is too thin, so there's no, no really engagement with that helix at all. So we go to the next one this one this one's better it it actually engages yeah about just about the right spot so that one's real easy and then I'll show you what a thicker one looks like so this one's thicker yet you put that in place drop it in there and then when you turn this this one is is grabbing right at the end of the helix and you really have to turn it hard to get it in place. Now it may be that over time these plastic pieces will wear and the thicker washer will be the right one but for now it's it's the medium one. So once you've determined that that's the right one that you want to use then you can install that friction washer on your boot by by easing it over this little bump and once that's in place you can install it and then there's your there's your connector now once you've got inline connectors that's nice but at some point you're going to want to attach your connectors to a box or maybe go through the bulkhead of your kayak and when you do that, you're going to, going to want to use a bulkhead connector. So I've designed a connector that can be attached to the face of a flat panel. 
and this one has a boot that on the outside is similar to the to the boots that go in the inline connectors but on the back side instead of sealing on the wire this one seals on the face of the bulkhead so this boot has a little bit of a taper on the back side of it which mates with a taper that's on the uh, the gasket side so these go together and they make a seal so you take your boot you install it into your housing you take the seal and then if you squeeze these together you can even do it with just with your fingers those two tapers coming together gives you an airtight seal and you can tell that again by taking one of your housings lock it on there cover up the opening with your finger and then that gives you a nice seal and then when you install this for real just to be on the safe side you might take a little bit of rtv and smear it around on there when you did when you did the installation just to be safe but as far as i can tell that's enough now when you want to install this onto a bulkhead the diameter of the hole that you would drill would be 7 eighths of an inch 0.875 and when you've got that hole drilled this will drop in place and to make sure that you've got the right hole pattern I made a couple of tools I've got two versions one that has bigger holes and one that has smaller holes these ones are designed so that if you use the one with the bigger holes it will drop down into the hole and then you can match drill through this tool with a drill bit that will then allow you to install a four millimeter stainless socket head cap screw in there and on this one this one has holes that are the right size that is the tap drill for an M4 thread now once you've got a connector installed on your bulkhead because this backside is open you could get water that went down inside so you would want to if you have this cable disconnected you're going to put a cap on there to keep anything from going in so i designed another boot that is a cap boot and it works the same way as the other ones except it just has a blank face on the end so if you've got this mounted on a bulkhead and you want to cap it off you put that on there and now you've got a watertight cap over that seal so with those parts you should be able to do inline cable connections and you should be able to do bulkhead cable connections that will let you completely wire your kayak with 45 amp rated power pole connectors that are completely waterproof